Hey everyone, Ryan from ebikeescape.com and today I wanted to talk about two mini bikes of e-bikes. That's what I like to call them. Uh, you could, there's probably a bunch of different names, but they're kind of the style bikes that look more like a moped compared to a regular bike. So there's a bunch of uh, different brands that offer these types of bikes, but I wanted to compare two mostly because these are very much in the wheelhouse of like value based bikes. So we have the Rad Power Bikes Rad Runner, uh, the first iteration of that that was released in fall 2019, and then Super 73, which I feel like is a company that's pretty well known in this area, has also announced or, or actually released a, a newer model that comes with the lower price tag. So I haven't jumped on either of these bikes, I just want to put that out there, but I wanted to kind of come at this. If I were to be looking at one of these mini bikes, these are probably the two ones that I'd compare. Um, I'm a big fan of kind of these value priced electric bikes, that's why we have our Rad Power bikes. Um, and, and I think they're generally more popular because they're more accessible so folks can get on them at that lower price point. So I wanted to dig into the specs of each of these bikes to see kind of which one you might want to consider. So if you like this type of video, make sure to let me know in the comments. I will look to do more. And yeah, let's take a look. Okay, so I just wanted to be clear. The Super 73 Z1 actually has been around for some time. And then the Rad Runner one was first announced in the fall of 2019. So I think, you know, my goal with this video was to really focus on, right, the, the lower price point of these like mini bike slash moped style e-bikes. Um, so the Super 73 comes in, if you look at their website, uh, it lists it as $13.95 here. However, if you go on Amazon, it is eleven fifty, which I think is really interesting that they have opted to sell this on Amazon. Uh, so there's obviously a huge, huge difference there. Uh, I'll be curious to see if they leave this price point the same or not over the long haul. Uh, I will put a link to both of these bikes um, in the description below if you're curious. And then the Rad Runner comes in at eleven ninety nine. It is worth mentioning that this was actually used to be $12.99 until recently uh, Rad Power Bikes announced the Rad Runner Plus, which is kind of like a premium uh, version of the Rad Runner. I did a post or a, a video kind of talking about what's new with that and, and my thoughts on that. But at the same time of that announcement, they reduced the price of the Rad Runner one by $100. So the other thing to keep in mind is I'm not as familiar with any promotions that Super 73 does. Obviously, if you buy it on Amazon, there's nothing you get there. However, Rad Power Bikes, they have they do lots of marketing, lots of different discount codes. For instance, if you wanted to receive a $50 Amazon gift card, you could use my link and you get $50 Amazon gift card if you purchased a Rad Runner. So that knocks the price down a little bit or allows you to buy some different accessories. Uh, if you're returning customer of Rad Power Bikes, you can actually get $100 off this price. Um, so that makes it even more compelling. So these prices are, you know, very similar, I would say. Uh, the You can get the, the Rad Runner for $10.99 if you are already a Rad Power Bikes customer. So definitely something to keep in mind. So as far as frame, um, the Super 73 comes with a steel frame, Rad Runner comes with aluminum frame. Uh, I think if you're somewhere where you get a lot of rain or you're worried about rust, those sort of things for us here in Wisconsin, that's definitely a consideration, uh, especially when we run, we ride on the streets in winter when there's tons of salt. Um, so something to keep in mind. And then as far as coloring goes, I mean, just generally, I love the look of all the 70, Super 73 bikes. This is like their niche. They focus on these uh, these style bikes and they all look fantastic, I think. Um, so they come in, the, the Z1 comes in all these different colors. So black, light blue, this pink color, and then this cool orange and then white. And then the seats are all different colors uh, depending on which one you choose. Um, and then the Rad Runner comes in just two colors the black and the forest green. So there's the black 
And there's the forest green. I actually like the green quite a bit. I think it looks quite nice. So let's move on to the motor. Um, so it's it's really it's, it's kind of difficult when you're comparing lots of e-bikes because there's no standard right of how uh, companies kind of advertise these. I would say I would say generally I feel like these are very similar offerings as far as the motor goes. In class two mode, you have 50, 500 watts uh, nominal, a thousand watt peak on the Super Seventy Three. Now on the Rad Runner, it is going to top out at 750 watts with that stock controller. There are obviously upgrades you can do to push more watts to this motor. And if you do a little bit more digging into Rad Power Bikes, you'll know that the branding of what or the marketing of it's of what kind of motor this is, I don't want to go too much in depth, but basically some companies advertise what Rad Power Bikes uses as a 500 watt motor. Are 750 watts going to the motor? Absolutely. That's where this kind of, there's no standardization. So different companies have decided to do uh, different things. So it's more just something to be aware of. Um, so I feel like you're getting similar power uh, between these two. And then I didn't see a rating for the Super 73, but you do get 80 newton meters of torque on that Rad Runner. The uh, Super 73 is in class two mode, tops out at 20 miles per hour. And same with the, the Rad Runner. Uh, you're not going to be able to go over 20, uh, again, unless you override those settings. So getting into some of the key considerations here, the Super 73 Z1 is a 36 volt, 418 watt hour battery, whereas the Rad Runner is 48 volts, 672 watt hours. So this is one of the key differences I think folks should keep in mind. You're going to get quite more, and we're going to get to range here in just a second, quite a bit more range on, on the Rad Runner with the additional um watt hour battery um, and then it's just as far as power goes you know 36 volt versus 48 volt definitely something to keep in mind the super 73 z1 is rated at 20 plus models tw sorry 20 plus miles uh, the rad runner 25 to 45 i think 45 is probably pushing it for most folks just generally speaking i'm going to get into this a little bit more but these bikes aren't as conducive to pedaling as say a regular bike or a re regular frame style I should say um, I think the Super 73 you know it is assumed that you're going to be using the throttle maybe even exclusively and so I think that's probably taken into consideration I've been reading a lot about the Super 73 Z1 some folks say 15 to 20 miles just depending um now on the Rad Runner, I mean, just in our personal experience with our Rad Wagon, you know, we pedal quite a bit. And so we're able to push our range quite a bit higher. I mean, you know, 25 miles for sure, uh, 30, you know, definitely possible. Um, so something to keep in mind when you're comparing these two bikes. The Super 73 um, Z1 is lighter at 56 pounds. The Rad Runner comes in at 65 pounds. Um, tires, I think that this is another key difference. Super 73 is known for these like slick street tires uh, and they're four inches on the Z1. And then Rad Power Bikes has their, um, their Kenda K-Rad 3.3 uh, inch wide tires. These are the same ones on the Rad Mini. And so if we just, I mean, you can, you can see very clearly there's those really cool looking street tires. I love those. Um, and then if you go with the Rad Runner, um, they're going to have a little bit more uh, tread on there, a little bit more traction. Um, maybe if you're going to go a little bit off-road, something to consider. Uh, it's definitely not a street tire exclusively like the, the Super 73 is. Both bikes have mechanical disc brakes, no suspension. Um, the Super 73 has a three LED display. The Rad Runner also has an LED display that shows battery charge level, pedal assist level, and light indicator. So definitely 
you know, this is the only model that doesn't have the LCD, uh, although you can buy it as an option for the Rad Runner. So it's very simplistic. The Super 73 comes with a thumb throttle. Rad Runner comes with a twist throttle. I think generally speaking, a lot of people prefer the thumb throttle, at least from my experience and talking with folks. Um, the twist throttle, some people who own a Rad Power Bike actually opt to buy uh, something that they can attach to the twist throttle to make it a thumb throttle. Uh, so just something to, to keep in mind. I don't think it's a deal breaker. We still we still use our twist throttle. We haven't made any modifications to it on our Rad Wagon. So something definitely to take into consideration is the pedal assist. So um, these are both single speed bikes. The Super 73 does not have a pedal assist. So this means you're pretty much just using the throttle. If you want to pedal alongside it, you can, but um, you know, you're, there's no pedal assist. So um, the Rad Runner has that cadence sen sensor. So you can set it to pedal assist between one and five. And as you pedal, it'll sense that you're pedaling and then the motor will kick on accordingly. So I think that's one of the main benefits uh, for sure of the Rad Runner. I mentioned that they're both single speed bikes. Um, so this is this is another thing that's more important maybe for us, but the 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 battery is integrated into the banana seat of the Super 73, whereas the Rad Power Bikes has the same battery that all the other models have, and it is removable. And the reason it's important for us is because we ride in the winter, and we want to be able to charge charge the battery inside. So we would have to bring our, you know, Super 73 if we were to buy one inside in order to charge it. So um, just thinking about longevity of the battery, I just wouldn't want to leave that in a freezing temperatures. So definitely something to, to think about. Passenger foot bags not available for the Super 73 Z1. Again, they're part of the pass passenger package for the Rad Runner. And then seat height, this is another key cons consideration, I think. So the Super 73 is set at 27 inches, whereas the Rad Runner has a minimum of 25 and a quarter inches all the way up to 36 and a half. The reason is, and this kind of goes with the styling of the bike, um, you know, that, that seat post or the seat is just completely different and you can raise that seat up high. Puts you in a much more comfortable uh pedaling um, puts you in a more comfortable position for pedaling. For me, I'm six feet tall. I can imagine that my knees are not going to like if the seat was set low or I was riding a Super 73 to pedal that over the long term. But I think if you're considering these moto style e-bikes, that may not be your consideration. Maybe you're just zipping around the city a little bit or something like that. Um, and the other thing I think just Look wise, I mentioned a little bit earlier. I really like the look of the Super Seventy Three. The Rad Runner, they they make a center console, and I'll I'll show it here shortly. But that really uh, changes the look of the Rad Runner. So something to to take into consideration. I'll scroll down here to the accessories, all the different accessories you can buy uh, for the Rad Runner, and you can see that center console pop up, and it I think it completely changes the the look of the bike. And then weight limit. 275 pounds on the Super 73, 300 pounds on the Rad Runner, and then front light, nothing for the Super 73, so you're going to want to buy a, a light for that. And it is integrated into the Rad Runner 1 right there. You can see it. It's the same light that comes with all the other models. And that's it. I think Hopefully this gives you a decent idea of what you might want to consider if you're looking at both of these uh, electric bikes or you're looking into these styles of e-bikes. Um, again, I haven't ridden either, but come, you know, the reason I created this spreadsheet was to act as if I was going to look at both these models, the things that um, I'd want to consider. I'm a very analytical person like the spreadsheet, helps me make a decision uh, comparing these side by side. So if you liked this video, let me know in the comments uh, and then I'll perhaps look into doing uh, similar to these videos and hopefully someday I will be able to test ride one of these motorbike uh, e-bikes. Um, I would love to try some of them out. 
And there are other brands of these. Um, so, but not at this price point, at least that I found. So if you know of another brand that's around this price point, let me know in the comments and, and share that with other folks. Um, but other brands you might want to look at if you're looking at maybe the, the more expensive models. So like Rise, R-I-Z-E is another brand. Juiced, Juiced is another brand that's also pretty popular. Um, but I think just generally Super 73 kind of owns this. Um, you know, they, they seem to be the major player in these style electric bikes. So thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time. Hey everyone, hope you enjoyed that video. If you want to support what I'm doing with eBike Escape, here are three easy ways. Number one, use my link in the description when you're buying a Rad Power Bike, you will earn a $50 Amazon gift card. I will receive one as well. Number two, view my list of recommended accessories. You can find this list at ebikeescape.com. Click on ebike accessories right at the top, otherwise, link in the description. Number three, if you own a Rad Power Bike, you can join the forum at radowners.com. Thanks again for watching.